In the last stream, we were working on finishing up the industrial age questline. We set up our assembly controller and the associated platforms and input and output units that are required in order for us to finally make the peripheral casing, which is the pretext to the machine frame in the digital age right here. This quest for the machine frame, which is going to get us into refined storage requires that peripheral casing, but we are getting ahead of ourselves. The first thing that we need to do here is click the primal age tick box. And we have now officially unlocked the digital age. And along with that, we should have also unlocked some new recipes along with the digital age. And the very first quest here is called now that's hell. Visit the nether to visit the nether, dig down in purgatory until you reach Y level negative 62. And when you move below that, you will teleport. So I really don't think that should be too difficult for us to do. If we run program and go to black gold, our black gold level is down at negative 43. And so I think really all we have to do here is jump into the oil. I don't think you get hurt when you go into crude oil. You don't. However, it does uh, act like water and that we, uh, we start to lose oxygen. And it looks like we are going to have to go a few blocks beneath the magma. But once we do, now that's hell. So this looks like a regular Minecraft nether. I do see a couple of balls around, which I'm going to try and avoid. There are a few things that we need here. We need netherrack. That's an important one. But then also nether quartz, which I'm assuming we will just find. Presumably, netherrack we can just find underground here. And once again, if we go to mining tunnel mode, we should just be able to get a massive amount of that nether egg nice and quick but then the nether quartz might be a little trickier to find so there are obviously two things we should do here the first is that we should go ahead run program new location and hell actually we'll put hot as hell add location uh, then i think we should run back real quick and maybe grab a torch because it is a little dark in here oh here we go so i just uh, continued that staircase that we cut out earlier and there is another quartz right here. I'm going to go back to Shapeless on my Ultimine Crafting. And that is quite a nice vein of nether quartz. That's 34. I will keep going a little bit here. Uh, nether quartz does not have an EMC, unfortunately. And I don't think, yeah, the block of nether quartz also doesn't have an EMC. Just something I did want to check because the block of glowstone did have an EMC value in the last stream. But I think I'll do a little bit more mining around here. We are very close, actually, to running out of durability on the Void Harvester. Thankfully, the Void Harvester is makeable. We can just remake it with some electrons, some neutrons, some gluons, and a proton. So that should be pretty straightforward. But I'm going to do some more mining like this with these uh, mining tunnels and see if I can't find some more nether quartz. All right. So I did manage to get a little bit more nether quartz. We're up to 49 in total. And so the next quests here are nether brick and quartz enriched iron. We need four quartz enriched iron and four nether brick along with the peripheral casing that we made in the last episode if we want to make the machine casing from refined storage here. So I will throw a stack of nether egg into the furnace. That's going to slowly but surely smelt into some nether brick. We'll make that eight times faster. And while we wait for that, we can also search for some iron in our chest here and we can craft that up with our nether quartz like so. And boom, we get four quartz enriched iron. And so that should be pretty much everything that we need in order to make our first machine casing. And I think this is where things are going to get a little trickier for us, though. So uh, there is a warning over here. It says, make sure you have enough mana when crafting items with the Batania Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate or else the items will despawn. That is interesting. So now there are three quests, one for the combiner, one for the comparator and one for the dissolver. And over on the left side here, we've got a ton of quests that revolve around a project E and the add on mod project E X. So the first quest here is the transmutation tablet, which works in the exact same way as the transmutation table, but it just allows you to carry it around with you wherever you go so that you can get access to all of this stuff without having to manually come back over physically to that transmutation table which is going to be quite useful. I don't really think we need it, but we do have to craft it in order to unlock these other quests here, so we might as well. Now, after that, we get access to EMC links, which are going to be very powerful for us. But 
In order to make those, we need covalence dusts, and these covalence dusts have had their recipes tweaked to where they require things like silicon dioxide, and to make silicon dioxide, we need something like a combiner, which leads us back over to this quest right here, and these other quests that also add machines from alchemistry, the combiner, the compactor, and the dissolver. Each one of these is made with the terrestrial agglomeration plate, and each one of these requires a full mana pool's worth of mana. So we need effectively three full mana pools worth of mana to make all three of these machines. With that in mind, I think what we probably want to do is just increase the number of end of flames we have, and probably also increase the number of mana spreaders that we have, especially given that the end of flames are so cheap. There are other flowers from Britannia that can generate more mana than the Endo Flame, but given that we have the ability to speed up time using our bed and using our pouch, we should be able to accelerate things to such a degree that it really doesn't take us too long at all to get a mana pool's worth of mana just using Endo Flames. On top of that, the fact that we can get basically an infinite number of blaze rods from the transmutation table. Uh, you know, we can always get more elements using the click machine and get more EMC if we need more than, you know, 10 stacks of blaze rods. That is going to give us the infinite amount of fuel we need to feed however many endo flames we make to get a ton of mana. So really, all we need to do, and I do see a couple of these guys hanging around here, but all we need to do is get more of the brown petals, the gray petals, and the red petals. We should have at least one of all of these. So I think light gray was the first one. We've actually got a few light gray flowers that we can craft down into yet more light gray petals. Uh, red petals, I see we have at the top there, and then brown petals we do also have available to us. The only thing we don't have here is a ton of burn meal to allow us to actually duplicate all of these to make a ton more end of flames. And so what I might do here is kind of dump all of this netherrack into the chest. We'll put the machine casing away for now as well. We are going to have to make two more of those because again each one of the combiner, the compactor and the dissolver do all also require a machine casing. Not that that should be too difficult. Obviously the quartz and iron and the other quartz super easy and making more peripheral casings is going to be a lot easier than it was making the first one because terra steel is super easy to make. It's just iron, gold and copper. Flux dust is just redstone and the compressed stone is just smooth stone in the crucible so none of that should be too difficult getting two more of those should be fine but i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to sleep real quick to make nightfall and then i think we'll go and attack a couple of skeletons to try and get a bunch of bum meal along the same lines there it's probably well worth us finally investing in some iron armor which is something we definitely should have done a long time ago but that is going to make it substantially less likely that we die at the hand of a rogue spider or a rogue skeleton when trying to get that bone meal. All right, so I managed to get 17 bones, which is 51 bone meal, which I think should be more than enough for us here. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and start duplicating these three colors of petal to allow us to make ideally just as many endo flames as we can, while also continue to put more awkward down around here. Also, I did see a, a comment in the YouTube comment section that asked me very politely to fix this little setup here and so you know what just for you youtube commenter there you go i've removed the uh, the oak planks it's gone and so we'll just continue dropping oak logs around the pure desi here to get more living wood we'll use that living wood along with the petals to make more mana spreaders because um, although you can put down as many endo flames as you like and you can link as many endo flames to one mana spreader as you like as well so i could put you know 20 endo flames down and have them all connect to this mana spreader the mana spreader is limited on how fast it can move mana from itself to the mana pool. And so you don't want too many end of flames connected. Otherwise, the bottleneck will be the mana spreader. And so we probably want to get a few more mana spreaders so we can put down even more end of flames and have them all work at maximum speed. All right, so I'm going to make 19 more end of flames for 20 in total. And I think I'm going to make four mana spreaders as well. So three more in total. And we'll have one pointing to each side of the mana pool here so all we need to do of course is grab our bucket which should be in here it is we can then of course take the water place that 
into the Petal Hothicary, which apparently already has water in it. That is completely fine. We do, of course, need some seeds. And what we can do, just like we did before, we can drop in one red, one light gray, and two brown. Then we could, of course, drop in the petal. And the nifty thing here is that if you refill this with water, as you can see here, it says right-click with an empty hand to add back the last recipe. So you can just right-click again, and it will instantly drop in the required amount of items if you have them in your inventory to make more endo flames. Okay, so there are 19 endo flames. And I think what we'll do is we'll temporarily move this mana spreader, and we'll also move this mana spreader as well. And so what I think we will do is we'll just place these mana spreaders down directly next to the mana pool. We could, of course, use our Wand of the Forest to shift right click, shift right click, shift right click, shift right click. That's going to point them directly at the mana pool. The mana spreaders can go further away. The further away the mana spreader is, the more mana is lost between the mana spreader and the mana pool, and also the slower it is as well, because the uh, beam of mana has to travel before the mana spreader can send another beam. So the closer it is to the mana pool, the faster it is going to work. We need to get two more mana spreaders. If we want to make two more mana spreaders, we just need two more cosmic ingots, which we can do by smelting, of course, some good old fashioned cosmic dust. Annoyingly, it doesn't look like you can do that in a regular Minecraft furnace. So we are going to have to once again, get out the, uh, the campfire sticks and light up the old campfire. I felt like we might as well do 16 while we're at it. Just uh, utilize all those campfires that we have. Uh, let's put those sticks back away. And other than that, we just need petals. We do still have a little bit of bone meal and we do of course still have some petals here. So I will go and get just a few more red petals here. We don't need that many of them. Again, we actually just need two, one and two. And now it should just be a case of putting these down here and here, of course, making sure that those are connected to the mana pool. If the Wand of the Forest isn't working for you, by the way, uh, shift right click in the air will change it from bind mode to function mode. If you're in function mode, you need to go back to bind mode to actually connect the uh, mana spreaders to the mana pools or to connect the end of flames to the mana spreaders. Now, if you put the end of flames down after the mana spreaders, they should auto connect to the nearest mana spreader. And it does. So if I put one here, that should connect there, it does indeed, and here should connect there, here should connect there, and so let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm then gonna start putting these in the middle. We might have to re-evaluate where these go. Yes, I'll have you go here, and I'll have you go there. That way, each one of those corner ones goes to a different mana pool. That is fine. And then we have four more left. Let's do one, two, three. And then I am going to break this fence here just for the symmetry of it. We'll put the fourth one down right about there. And then now it should just be a case of making sure those are all connected. They are indeed. And so now if we were to take some blaze rods and real quick, I'm going to dump a lot of my inventory here into this chest because right now it is full of stuff and mob drops that we just do not need to be carrying around with us. Once we have some inventory space, let's get a few stacks of blaze rods. And if we drop those in the middle here, that should start to trigger all of these end of flames. And we'll see that even the ones that are furthest out are able to get that mana. And so now I'm just gonna try and sleep here and see how much mana that gets us because that should accelerate the speed at which mana is produced. It should burn through all of those blaze rods very quickly. Okay, those are finished. And so how much mana do we have? We got a fair bit of mana. We're over halfway to a full stack. I think basically all we need to do now is just do this a few more times until we have a full mana pool worth of mana. So after the second batch, we're actually very close here. We're uh, over three quarters of the way towards a full mana pool worth of mana. Of course, we are basically out of EMC here, which is not ideal. I can drop all of these down and I'll give this a try. I'll see if these are enough. If they're not though, we might have to uh, to get some cosmic dust going. We are gonna have to do that anyway. And so you know what, whilst I wait for that to, uh, to do its thing, instead of just accelerating the time, I'm gonna quickly get more cosmic dust and quickly increase our EMC number because even if this does get us to a full mana pool. We do, of course, need even more full mana pools to get all of the other machines. So we're very close here. We don't quite have enough, but I have managed to get uh, 125,000 more EMC. And so if we just drop a little bit more in the way of blaze rods onto our setup here, that should get us the full mana pool worth of mana. And then we should be able to get our first machines. So let's start with the combiner here. The combiner, I'm gonna go ahead and bookmark it, requires a block of compressed iron, which I believe we do have in here. We do indeed. We do of course need that machine casing that we made earlier in the episode. And then along with that, we need an, a finished PCB, 
Again, thankfully, we made multiple extra finished PCBs in the last stream. Never mind, it looks like we have one finished PCB in our system. Oh, but we have four unfinished PCBs. Fantastic. Okay, that is fine. We can make more transistors. We can make more capacitors. That's not going to be a problem. We then need a Rune of Fire, a Rune of Autumn, and a Rune of Wrath. So the Rune of Fire we definitely have. I'm going to take all of the runes out here because I know that the other runes are made with the runes that we have. So the Rune of Wrath here requires a Rune of Earth, a Rune of Winter, and two Terra Steel Ingots. The Rune of Winter is made with a Rune of Earth, a Rune of Water, three snow blocks and a kick interesting so the snow blocks should be pretty straightforward we can turn water into snow using the pure daisy the way that that works is you have to place down blocks around the pure daisy to stop the water from breaking the pure daisy because it will do that if the water touches it but what we can do is something like this because these blocks here 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 and here are still within the pure daisy's range but are not gonna flow and break the pure daisy we don't have to worry too much about the uh, cobblestone being turned into a living rock. That is completely fine. What we do want to do is grab our bucket here and then just fill in these four slots with water. That water should slowly but surely transform into snow. And then we can use that snow for the rune of winter. The difficult part here is going to be the cake because making the cake looks somewhat tricky. We can't do it this way until we have the combiner. And of course, the combiner is the thing that we are making so we are going to have to use the regular minecraft recipe here wheat is easy enough sugar is also easy enough milk buckets shouldn't be too difficult which you have to find some cows and milk them but then the egg could be tricky i don't think we have an egg in our chest we don't so we might just have to go out looking for a chicken to see if we can't get an egg that way yeah then we also need a rune of winter for the compactor and it doesn't look like we need one for the Dissolver. The other runes are required here, although these ones seem a little bit easier, actually. All right, so not too long later, and we did manage to find a little patch of chickens, and look at that, there's another egg right there. So eggs we have, and I've just managed to transform one of the chickens into a cow, and um, we did go a bit of a roundabout way about doing this. You'll notice I do have some, uh, some pumpkin pie and a lot of cookies in my inventory. The uh, first thing we tried was heading through to the purgatory dimension, where we placed down a composter. Once we had the compost down, we used that to transform one of the uh, villagers there into a farmer. We then traded with that farmer in the hopes that uh, the expert level farmer would give us a cake trade. Unfortunately, he didn't give us a cake trade, which was uh, not ideal, but uh, we did manage to, uh, to come back after all of that and uh, find some chickens here to get eggs from and uh, find this cow, which I am hopeful is not going to despawn. We're not too far away from our world base. I'm going to go ahead and put a new waypoint here called cow. And then actually I could just run this. I was going to go away and come back, but to be fair, I might as well just uh, teleport the cow back with us. There we go. Fantastic. And then once we're back here, we just need to grab our bucket and then we should be able to milk him as much as we like to get us the cake. So one, uh, we are going to need three buckets, of course, now that I think about it. So let me get the remainder of our iron that we smelted earlier. That is fine. I was going to make more composters to get even more farmer villagers and trade with those guys, but it didn't seem like it was going to be worth it. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let's go and do something like this. Uh, we do have substantially less wheat than we did previously. Also, I should put that charcoal back into the uh, transmutation table. Of course, the charcoal there was to allow us to transform the animals that we were looking for. Either way, back over here, we should now have everything for a cake. And thankfully, the cake does have an EMC value, so we can just place it in here. And now we can take out as many cakes as we like. So back to the combiner. We need Rune of Fire, which we have. We then need the Rune of Autumn, which is Air, Fire, Spider Eye, and three leaves. That should be fine. We do have one Spider Eye. We've killed quite a few spiders, and we have a ton of leaves. So back over here, we are going to have to swap things out a little bit. We're going to have to uh, rotate this guy to point towards our Runic Altar, and we might have to put a bit more mana in again to get us back up to that full mana pool. But if we do Spider Eye three oak leaves as well as the rune of fire and then i think it was the rune of air but let me check it was indeed boom that's gonna get us that rune and again because this is a runic altar recipe we will get the rune of fire and the rune of air back uh, this is one of the villagers that uh, came back with me when i opened my temp pad this is actually our expert level farmer over here we do have our snow blocks let me quickly grab my shovel 
So we can go ahead and pick these up. That cow has made its way out of there. That's fine. The village has also made its way out, but that's also fine. Those both might die, but I don't think that's going to be too big of a deal for us. I don't think we're going to need them going forward. There are our snow blocks back over here. This is almost done. Let's make sure we have enough living rock to actually complete the transformation. We are definitely going to need more. That's fine. We've got more over here. And of course, we can make even more using this cobblestone. Boom and boom. We get three runes back there, one of them, of course, being the Rune of Autumn. And then now the tricky one that we're after, the Rune of Wrath. So Earth we have, and then Winter we need. Winter is maybe fine. We need Water and Earth, both of which, of course, we have. Water, Earth, we needed two Snow. We also need one block of Wool, which we might not have. And um, unfortunately, we did see a lot of sheep while we were out and about, but I think I transformed all of them into cats or foxes. Uh, the reason I did cats or foxes is just because those were the mobs that ran away the fastest after I transmuted them, which is not ideal. Do I have any wool? No. Do I have any string left over? It would appear the answer is no. Thankfully, it is night again, and so it shouldn't be too difficult for us to go and find four string from four spiders. After that, we should get two more terra steel ingots, which again is going to be fairly straightforward. I am fairly certain that we have some gold left in here we do indeed we need by the looks of it two terra steel ingots so we'll do one and two and then if we just grab two copper that should be essentially those two terra steel ingots taken care of a few spiders later we have everything we need to make the piece of wool fantastic while we wait for that let's go and harvest this living rock just to make sure we can make all of these runes and i think that's going to be basically everything that we need in order to make the combiner we of course do have to go through the second process of making the rune of wrath but i think this is good to go here actually and again the good news is here that we do need this rune of winter for more than one rune but like the other runes the rune of earth the rune of fire etc we do keep this rune of winter it doesn't get used up in the recipe so let's drop the living rock let's right click with the one forest we'll take all of those runes back and then now we need to make that rune of wrath which was the rune of winter and i believe the rune of earth it was indeed rune of winter rune of earth not block of snow and then two terra steel ingots one and two let's get some more blaze rods and let's drop those onto here just to fill up the mana that we've used, even though I don't think it's um, a particularly large amount of mana that we have used for these crafts yet. It's a very small amount in total. And I am being told by the Twitch chat that although it looks like it requires a full mana pool's worth of mana, it's actually going to use substantially less than a full mana pool's worth of mana to make this combiner. So we'll uh, we'll see if that's true momentarily. If that is the case, that is going to make getting the, uh, the three machines from our chemistry here substantially easier. This rune does look like it required a lot more mana than the rest of them, but it is now done. So once again, Living Rock one to the forest that gets us everything that we need and so now it's just a case of dropping all of that stuff onto the terrestrial agglomeration plate now i did put some things away like our block of compressed iron while we were uh, trying to transmute mobs i want to be able to carry as much charcoal as was humanly possible but i think we have everything so we've got the finished pcb we've got the block of compressed iron we've got the machine casing we've got the rune of wrath we need the rune of autumn which we have, and we also need the Rune of Fire. All right, I think that is all of the required items. How close are we to a full mana pool's worth of mana? We are very, very close. I'm not going to risk it. The quest book does specifically say in big red letters that uh, items will be lost. Oh, gosh, there are so many zombies there. Jeez, that uh, items will be lost if you don't have enough mana. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to drop a few more stacks of blaze rods onto here. We'll sleep through to the morning and then once we have a full mana pool's worth of mana we'll drop all of our items onto the terrestrial agglomeration plate and hopefully get our first alchemical machine in the form of the combiner all right rune of fire rune of autumn rune of wrath machine casing compressed iron and finished pcb all of the mana is being sucked out of our mana pool it looks like that's either going very slowly or it is going to use substantially less mana than it looked like so I think that's done. It is. That is fantastic. You love to see it. Okay. So that is the combiner, which doesn't look some more quests for us. Can we make the compactor and the dissolver? I think the answer should be yes. First things first, we do need to make two more peripheral casings. For that, we're going to need eight more terra steel, which does mean we need even more gold. Let's take 
maybe half a stack of gold and get that smelting over in here. And of course, we will use our grains of time to make that just a little bit faster. And eight is really the only number that we're after. Let's drop all of those into our mana pool. Fantastic. At which point we just need eight iron. And of course, eight copper. Once we have the eight terra steel, then all we are going to need here is a few more compressed stone and a bunch of flux dust, specifically eight flux dust. I don't know how much flux dust we have left. The answer is none. That is fine. We do have a bunch of smooth stone. And of course, we have the ability to make this crucible quite acidic. Now, one thing we did find out last time is that uh, if you make the crucible too acidic, you actually take damage when you stand next to it, which is um, unfortunate, to say the least. Is this currently acidic? No, that's fine. We can uh, shift right click. Excuse me? Okay, let me uh, try that again. Apparently the uh, the crucible is... Uh, is is deadly in more ways than one maybe it was far too acidic um excuse me how did you make your way uh, how did you breach the compound in the daytime anyway get rid of him drop in some phosphorus again if you drop in too much it becomes too acidic and you do take damage nearby that's fine let's drop in the smooth stone fantastic and then once we have the compressed stone then the final piece of the puzzle is just that flux dust and so for that we're gonna have to take some more of our cosmic dust and we can just drop that into our mana pool over here that has the red concrete powder beneath it once we've got quite a few of those back over here we can just drop those in i'm gonna drop the full uh i'll drop 16 in there i don't think we need 32 for the time being and then of course we can add a little bit more fuel to our air compressor just to make sure that that process completes now, someone in the Twitch chat has made a pretty good point here in that I probably should have made all of the runes that we needed first because I made a bit of a mistake here. The Compactor requires the Rune of Gluttony and the Rune of Winter. The Rune of Winter we do have, but the Rune of Gluttony here requires the Rune of Fire, and I did just use my Rune of Fire on making the Combiner, whereas if I'd have made the Rune of Gluttony first using the Rune of Fire, the Rune of Fire wouldn't have been used up to make the Rune of Gluttony, and then I could have used that to make the Compactor. So that's unfortunate. It does mean that I am going to have to remake the Rune of Fire here, and I think that's about it. I think everything else we have, because the Rune of Fire, yeah, was the only like non-advanced rune that we need, but that does mean I have to make one more Rune of Fire here, which should be fine, actually. So it turns out I was incorrect. I am going to need the remainder of that redstone. I forgot that it's like an 8 to 2 recipe. That's fine, we have enough redstone to make that happen, and we do already have what it takes to make another peripheral casing. Nice. And then upgrading that should be fairly straightforward as well. We are going to have to get more quartz enriched iron, but we do have the nether quartz for that, and of course, we do have the nether brick as well. We made all of that earlier today. Let me put that dark oak sampling away. Let's do something like this and like this. We'll take two lots of those. I'll put the nether quartz bank away to free up a little bit of inventory space over here. This is done fantastic so let's get another peripheral casing and then let's upgrade both of those to machine casings and so now it's just a case of getting those runes again so thankfully the fire rune is pretty straightforward uh, i'm gonna put my runes in here for temporarily just to free up again some more space because we don't have any space at all in our inventory we probably don't need to be carrying all of this food around with us actually now that i mention it so the rune of fire we need a brick a gunpowder and a mana powder. The mana powder, of course, is just the cosmic dust. We are going to have to place an everything this block underneath our mana pool again, but again, that should not be a problem. We do have spare everything this blocks lying around. Let's quickly go and replace the red concrete powder with an everything this block, and then let's do something like this. Uh, one should be all that we need, actually. I will go ahead and re grab that for the future, and we can just put the rest of the cosmic dust away. Gunpowder we should have he said very optimistically we do we have exactly one left bricks we do also have fantastic i'll take that as well and then it's just a block of orange and a block of red okay that should be fine we have what it takes to make a block of red petals fantastic and still have one left over and then orange we don't have but we do still have some bun meal left from earlier in the stream and so it should just be a case of once again duplicating this petal utilizing 
the bone meal and as soon as we have more than nine we can then go ahead and craft that into a block of orange dye and that should be everything we need to make the rune of fire again and boom there is our fire rune reacquired so now we need a rune of summer we need a rune of greed we need a rune of gluttony and we already have the rune of winter that is fine of course this is on the brink of exploding i'm just gonna let some uh, some gas out there it's bang on five bar i think that should be fine i thought i heard an explosion but everything appears to be just fine i'm just to be safe i'm gonna release a little bit of um of pressure that should be fine okay so let's have a look here the rune of summer requires a melon slice a slime ball two sand and then the rune of air and the rune of earth so we don't have any melon annoyingly however on my trips out in the past i have noticed i think it's in this direction we have like a big old patch of pumpkins and i believe that we can transform pumpkins into melons using the philosopher's stone so i might have to head out and try and find some pumpkins to make that work as far as the rune of greed goes this just needs two terra steel with water and spring spring is just wheat with saplings that seems very doable we should have three saplings in here we do i don't believe it matters what kind of saplings you use and so we just need to combine those up with one wheat one water and one fire so fire we have in our inventory water we have over here and of course wheat we are growing in our botany pot let's drop you on like so thankfully we do still have a ton of living rocks that should be fine and then again it's just a case of getting get more terra steel here boom there is our rune of spring and then let's put that back on here again this time with the two terra steel that i just made and the rune of water once that's done then we need the rune of gluttony this one is the rune of winter with the rune of fire and again two more terra steel ingots there is our rune of greed and then back to gluttony this one was winter which we have along with fire and again two more terra steel and then once that's done we'll go out and we'll see if we can't find those pumpkins nice here we go all right so all we need to do is just take one melon there's our melon slices i'll take a pumpkin as well just so we can make some uh, pumpkin seeds if we need more pumpkins in the future and you know what while i'm here might as well take an extra melon just to be safe not that i think we're necessarily going to need it but now we can use our temp pad we can go back to our home and we should have everything that we need so over here what are we after we need one watermelon slice we need one slime ball boom we also need two sand one air and one earth rune that is fine air and earth are the two runes that are still in here let's take both of those out let's put both of them on here and then sand we might not have i feel like we never have sand we don't but as per usual we can just right click on some dirt with our philosopher's stone pick it all up with ultimine one and two boom and boom and i think that should be everything that we're going to need i think that's all of the runes so let us see here we do actually real quick need to make some more transistors and capacitors because we need to get two more finished pcbs right now we only have unassembled pcbs so we need four transistors and four capacitors all right so four more transistors and four more capacitors later that should be everything that we need to get these finished pcbs and so now it's just a question of whether or not we have enough mana right because we've got the machine frames that's all good we do need the compressed iron actually i don't know if we have enough we totally do fantastic let's get two more blocks of compressed iron one and two and so we need one machine frame one block of compressed iron one finished pcb that's the same for both recipes and then for the compactor here we need a rune of air rune of winter and rune of gluttony so let's get those items we need a rune of air a rune of winter and a rune of gluttony one two three again very much so hoping that we have enough mana here it looks like we should 
Again, I think this right here is the final set when those balls hit. That is done. And so I think we have potentially enough. I think it might take like one quarter of a mana pool worth of mana. Again, just to play it a little bit safe, I'm going to drop some more blaze rods on here. But I think we should have everything we need here. So let me put uh, this away in here. I'll put you up in here as well. And then let's once again do machine casing, block of compressed iron, finished PCB. This time for the dissolver, we need a rune of greed, a rune of summer, and a rune of earth. A rune of greed, a rune of summer, and a rune of earth. Let's do one, two, and three. I don't think it fails instantly, by the way. Like, if you don't have enough mana, I think the, um... I think it will wait for more mana to come in. Like, the balls will just stay floating for a little while. But it is done. Fantastic. And that is all three of the alchemistry machines taken care of. And so now, the only question is power. And I believe that is where this quest right here for the mana flux field comes into play. This is a block from Batania that can convert mana into redstone flux. And it doesn't look too difficult. The hardest part is going to be the four blocks of redstone. But given that we already have 28 redstone dust, we only need a few more pieces here to take us up to the 36 required for four blocks. We could have made more there, but again, I don't want to use all of our mana because we are about to use even more of that mana for power. So let's just drop in one singular gold ingot to get our 100th mana ingot of the day. That allows us to make the mana flux field. And then with that, what we should be able to do is place it down on the ground and place a machine next to it, like the combiner. We can then use our wand of the forest to point this mana spreader at the mana flux field. And that should start sending power over to the combiner. Nice. So now going forward, we can use this combiner to make things like graphite and i believe the idea here is that we can then use the graphite to make this the graphite dust and then we can use that graphite dust to make diamonds and once we have diamonds that kind of opens up all of this over here because now that we have the combiner we can make these low covalence dusts because we can make things like silicon dioxide by taking silicon and oxygen and placing them into the combiner and then we can combine all of those covalence dusts with diamonds to make things like the energy condensers and then the emc links and then the basic power flowers and the more advanced power flowers and all of the different colors of matter from project ex and work our way up to an insane level of emc but that is a problem for future isaac for now i'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of universe io there